I love you. I'll kill you. This episode of the pod contains discussion of sexual and domestic violence. One, two, three, four, five, six, hit it! Hello everyone and welcome to Swim Fans, an erotic thriller teen movie podcast where we have opinions on shit. We got takes. Spicy takes. The hottest takes. Sour takes. The most uh, rotten, disgusting, putrid takes. Savory S- takes. Smooth uh, as a marble takes. Freshly I- shaved takes. <laughs> Nared takes. <laughs> Laser uh, hair follicle removed takes. Freshly skinned takes. Skinless takes. <laughs> El dente takes. <laughs> Sewage monster takes. takes. Burned in effigy. Some shud ass takes. Burned in effigy takes. (laughs) Virgin sacrifice takes. (laughs) Aztec takes. (laughs) Sky burial takes. (laughs) Glistening area 51 takes. Okay, I'm. uh, Alright, I'm your co host, uh, Take Master Alex Hawking. I'm uh, interdimensional being take my Esther Gamma Craig Neeson. I'm take bitch Josh McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're talking about Tetsuya Nakashima's 2014 masterpiece, The World of Kaneko. Hey Alex. <clears throat> what hey is, Craig. What is The World of Kaneko? The World of Kaneko... Actually, first, let's do a quick spoiler warning, because I do think this movie is really exceptional and, beep, and part beep, of the... Beep. Spoiler. Beep. Beep. Oh, that was your warning beep. sound. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's a very twisty film, but unlike movies like uh, Wild Things or The Perfection, it does twists very well. Mm-hmm. We're going to give away all of the twists in dis- indiscriminately yes so watch the movie Mm -hmm. uh we'll be here when you get back it is on every conceivable streaming service despite no one watching it Mm -hmm. it is on shutter amazon uh it was on hulu for a while i don't know if it still is uh there are no it's on tubi Mm. whatever that is sounds made up who's (laughs) not Watch it for yourself unless you have a lot of unless you have issues with stuff like sexual violence, in which case maybe don't watch it. Yeah. It's an, if you have if you have issues with uh anything, I think this movie has it. Yeah, it's it's very upsetting for reasons I'm sure we'll definitely get into and I'm, reasons I'm sure the the robot lady at the top of the episode probably warned you about as well. But I think the reason for giving a spoiler warning is to incentivize you to watch this film uh, uh, as virginal um, and um, bathed in all of the finest of olive oils um, as possible, like you're about to be sacrificed to a volcano. Uh, a lot because... of sacrificing <laughs> happen- happening today. I don't, really, I don't know. It's just like... It, you know, it, it actually sounds like you're about to grill somebody. Yeah, I don't know. Some stuff coming out with my father. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, this is a fantastic movie, and it deserves an airing that is... Uh, uh, it, it deserves to be watched. Uh, I think we all, all three of us really think the, the world of this movie, and you should watch it uh, un uncolored by our uh, word saying about it. So we'll sit here for the entire runtime of Kanika <laughs> in silence uh, and wait for you to get back. Uh, we will also be doing an episode uh, for if you're flying, and we will we will tell you that um, uh, you know uh, really we'll whisper things to you um, as if we're on the flight with them. Yeah, um, we will. <laughs> we'll drink, 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 ladies coming. We'll do one as if you're falling asleep. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Uh, did, did you want a ginger ale? <laughs> A very attendant, uh, flight attendant. It's just we very... got trail mix on this one. Yeah, that just... that actually sucks though. Like I'll be in the middle of working or sleeping, and then they'll be like ginger ale, and I'm like, don't talk to me. I'm not. I'm not making eye contact. <laughs> don't engage with me. See, that's uh, that's a thing I have where I feel like I'm missing out if I do, if I didn't get my ginger ale. <laughs> do you, do you ever, they ever just give you the whole can? Yeah, dude, that owns. Dude, 
They could make every person on that flight so much happier if they just gave everyone the can. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like an eight year old who gets to like have a sip of my dad's I, beer. I, have, like, I feel like I get I a get treat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> American society is full of babies that need a fucking treaty <laughs> treat in order to like behave. <laughs> the world's worst children. Yes. <laughs> I like, I like, I like, I like. So welcome back. Congratulations on having finished The World of Conoco. Uh, and now I'm going to summarize the movie you just watched. The World of Conoco follows two cross-cutting stories set three years apart, all revo- revolving around the titular Conoco. The primary story is about Conoco's father, disgraced psychotic former detective lieutenant uh, Akizu. We'll just call him the detective. Fujishima. De- yes. Detective Fujishima. Yes who shortly after discovering three dead bodies at his new job as a security guard is contacted by his ex-wife who hasn't heard from her daughter in a week. Finding drugs in her purse, Fujishima doesn't want to call the police and thus begins his existential quest to find his daughter, which he sees as his path to a vaguely defined and probably impossible redemption. The second story, set three years before Kaneko's disappearance, follows an unnamed middle school student. He's constantly bullied by his peers before he meets and falls in love with Kaneko. As Kaneko is friends with several gang members, the bullying stops and they become closer. Unnamed student longs to be cl- as close to Kaneko as Ogata. Ogata? Ogata. Ogata. A now dead student who Kaneko loved, who killed himself a few years prior. At a party, Kaneko and her gang drug the narrator and leave him to be raped by a group of old men. He vows revenge, but is killed when he finds himself unable to hurt Kaneko. Back in the present, Fujishima's investigation continues, eventually leading to the discovery that Kaneko has been the mastermind of a Jeffrey Epstein-style child sex trafficking ring and went missing shortly after stealing a bunch of photographs of high-profile clients engaged in child sexual abuse. Uh, Months after blunderously and violently dismantling his daughter's sex ring, he discovers that one of the girls in the photos is the daughter of one of Kaneko's middle school teachers. The teacher admits she killed Kaneko to protect her daughter. Fujishima demands to know where the body is, which due to immense which, due to immense snowfall, is completely inaccessible. The movie ends with Fujishima and the teacher futilely digging for Kaneko's body in a snowy field, endlessly toiling away in his impossible task of finding his daughter and redeeming himself. Uh, what'd y'all think of The World of Kaneko? It's a good movie. It's one of my favorites. Like, top five, man. It's very, very powerful. It's very good. Bringing up The Handmaiden and the sort of twists and the unraveling, uh, The Handmaiden is a silky unraveling it's a uh, snake-like grace uh this is a snake that is um biting the shit out of you <laughs> and twisting and jerking in every possible way and uh uh also strangling your arm as it's biting you uh i use the words blunderous and violent in my recap and i think that's a pretty good description of of uh the detective story yeah and even the editing is uh a violent and mm-hmm. whiplash uh type thing um a lot of hell handheld uh close-up shots yes and slam cuts yeah very edgar wright so good just the cuts are so good man J- josh what do you think of the world of conoco i think that this film is a rare movie that gets better every time that you see it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that Conoco, and if you um, watched it, um, I'm sure that there were a lot of points that were just uh, very shocking. So once you uh, have seen Conoco more than once, um, because you are anticipating what's happening, it becomes less shocking and you're able to just pay attention more to it. Yeah. And the movie is, you know, while deeply troubling, it's so incredibly rich. Like, to me, this film seems like a summation of Nakashima's filmmaking. Like, I, like, there, like there's so many different tones and so many different moods and that are just, like, smashed together. And it should feel Frankenstein, but it's not. Like, there's, the mo- there's like, these, these dreamlike um, moments where the middle school student... It, it, it's from his point of view and he's like thinking about Conoco and even after he's she, he's just been like sold by her he's still thinking about her and there's this like dream pop kind of song that plays in the background there's these kind of like ugly little animated segments 
and it's like all so good and then it'll cut to um like the bleakest shit of um Fujishima the detective Fujishima doing something horrible and then it'll cut to something like really ultra violent um and then it'll cut to those absolute like absolutely like uh, diabetic coma inducing sugary sweet <laughs> scenes of Kaneko at the party and it's all of these like different tones that are so unique and they just it's 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 such a tapestry that this movie makes it's really it's really masterful and what makes like those or what i think works about these like um drastic tonal shifts is that it really follows the mental state of the main character it establishes at the beginning that he either has schizophrenia or is this severely bipolar Mm mm-hmm um, and these sort of rapid changes in mood, I think, really, and um, I feel like it really gets into that kind of drastic mentality that is is a key to the kind of bipolar experience. It never feels like his mental illness is what drives him to do the despicable things he does either. Yeah, it's yeah, a that- it's a really cool illustration of mental health issues. Yeah, this. I'm- I mean, this movie, it's, it's frenetic. It's, it's, and I'm, I'm not saying this in a negative. It's desperate. Like this oh, movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie feels like a sprint and you're near the end of the sprint and you're like, you're, you're not able to control your legs as well as you were at the start of it. And it's like a slow motion tripping. It's a slow motion train wreck. It's a slow, it's, you know, it's, it's, there's just something so flailing about this movie Mm -hmm. um and and to be able to capture that while still having such a tight control on like on tone and the camera work it's it's really remarkable yeah uh the end of the movie feels uh, again like a marathon runner who's sort of lost it and is fatigued and the shots are longer Mm -hmm. they're less color i mean they're in this sort of snowstorm the teacher who killed conoco and the detective and the, t- the takes are longer and and everything is somber there's no music there's just digging there's digging and weeping and crying and the movie has has exhausted itself in the same way that uh again the there's a parallel between the way that the the freneticness of the film uh, mirrors the that of the detective mm-hmm. uh, his desire to find his daughter and his desire to kill his daughter with his own hands which is impossible Mm -hmm. um and at the end we're left with this like colossal greek tragedy thing uh Mm -hmm. where he has one fixation and in a kind of sisyphean way will always be digging in that snow Mm -hmm. and never finding but digging and never finding it's mm, just really masterfully cut and there, it's funny too this movie has yeah. has physical comedy there's a there's a detective that serves kind of as a he's the, the man that initially recruits the detective uh to find his own daughter and instead of being the sort of um uh duplicitous um sort of self-interested uh chief of police it's this really sprightly (laughs) uh well-dressed but he's dressed um in lighter clothes like tan suits and he's this cute little sprightly guy he's always eating he's he's always eating sweets he's eating a a pie at one or cake of Mm -hmm. some sort and he has suckers and he gets hit by a car. He gets hit by the the uh, Fujishima detective Fujishima at one point in the car, and Fujishima is laughing, and then the detective is on the ground, uh, having flown up in the air, having been hit by a car, and he's also laughing, <laughs> and it's really funny and kind of heartwarming. But just just five minutes earlier, we saw an evil police officer execute his wife, mm-hmm. go to execute his uh, son. Uh, get tackled by police, and then the police sort of um, they uh, murder him. They make yeah they they yeah. Uh, he has a suicide, which means they they all gang up on each other. And little sprightly dude kind of it's implied that he kind of pulls the trigger, and and then they call it a suicide. Just this probably yeah. one of the darkest moments in the film. This he just straight up executes his wife after. She's been raped. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And and then we're given this moment of physical comedy, and it's really heartwarming. And and it should be said like, again: there's a strata of 
of of things that this film wears and one of them is ha huh, um the kind of uh lethal weapon die hard mm-hmm. type of um you know we're going to go outside the law in order to solve this crime and mm-hmm. there's a grind grindhouseiness yeah, to it e- yeah. even uh, there's an Ameri- uh, even down to the musical cues for Detective Fu- uh, Detective uh, Fukushima. There's a American rock uh, cues, and mm-hmm. there's like uh, nice nice tracks with guitar solos and and so on. Uh, the the opening of the film, like the opening credits, are stylized like an Italian police film. Exactly, and mm, it, yeah. and it and it, it kind of it, it it doesn't really deliver on that. It, I mean, there's a there's a set aesthetic ways that it does oh i think it's a mis complete misdirection it's it's a misdirection that's right but there i mean it does kind of provide it's Mm -hmm. a bit trojan horsey there's he's he's got the suit he's got the american muscle car Mm -hmm. uh you know he's got the out uh operating outside the law you know doing whatever it takes type of shit but really it's not about that Mm -hmm. It's, it's it's fun and it's it's a it's part of the succulent layer cake of the film, but it's a complete mm-hmm. like misdirect. And that that and to ex- like expand on what Josh says, that that's like one of the things that will maybe you'll fixate on the first watch, but then you'll realize that it's kind of um, there as a shell, and then you know you slowly boil down. Uh, what's happening in the movie and the ultra violence you expect it and then repeated watches you're like what is conico <laughs> right you know, what 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 is this because um and i'll stop talking after this but conico is this this siren she's like the the siren from um uh uh you know like a the odyssey, odyssey everyone she knows exactly what to say to everyone to get them to love her to follow her down the rabbit hole which alice in wonderland is explicitly uh, uh, referenced the entire movie you see the book (laughs) Mm -hmm. she she reads from it at one point one of the one of the young boys that she's groomed is uh put literally in alice's dress uh before being uh sexually assaulted by old men uh she is this 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 beckoning call that's leading Fu, uh, Fujishima, and everyone everyone in the film uh, is magnetically pulled to Kaneko. I want to go back a bit to the showdown on the rooftop, yeah, and um, also the opening credits as well. And I think this movie does such a good job with that opening sequence of establishing like this is how this dude sees himself. Yeah, he sees himself as like John McClane, yes. or or and and but he he also has like what if John McClane but crippling mental illness. Yeah, and I think that really starts to come out in that final like parking garage showdown where it is just the most absurd shit ever starts happening mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. all the violence is like super over the top it's like he cuts the guy open with a knife right before the police shoot him he yeah. they shoot each other multiple times at point blank range right. and just keep going right. and the movie does such a good job with that character that uh, maybe my third time through i was like oh, this isn't happening (laughs) or like this isn't like they're having this conflict on the roof, but it's not, they're not shooting each other constantly at point blank range. He's just kind of is interpreting the scene as an action sequence from Die Hard. Mm. Um, And I don't, I'm not trying to go into like fan theory, brain genius shit here. I think that is kind of like a creative choice Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that the movie makes Mm -hmm. is um, the uh, unreliable narrator idea or trope. And I think that like things can kind of appear more heightened. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Like, I don't think the junior detective exists. Like he's. I think that guy is um, a fabrication that Fujishima is making up. Do you guys not think this? So I never, no, I've never thought about. Uh, okay, that. Okay, okay, so so okay, okay, so no one else in the film ever interacts with him, um, and he's constantly he only ever talks to Fujishima, um, and it's mostly over the phone. Uh, so they they never he never really comes into contact with any other person. He doesn't have any sort of like name or anything. He just kind of um, shows up places. 
when he's hit by uh, the car, he like ragdolls in a really weird way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I don't think he exists at all. I think it's a really subtle display of um, like the perhaps visual and auditory hallucinations that Fujishima might be experiencing while he's going through all this. I mean, not, I mean, like not to like Mister Robot it or anything. Yeah, but, like, yeah. No, no, but no, I, no. But I, 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 yeah, I really don't. I, I think it's like super subtle, and it's they play it really cool. But yeah, I don't think that character is a real person. Like he, he, he always knows too much. Um, he's always sharing too much information. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's like a figment. And, and we, we, we immediately establish that. I mean, from the opening sequence, we're, we see Christmas, and and we hear, uh, 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 you know, a church song or some sort of Christmas thing. And we're we're being interspersed with uh, uh, Fujishima saying "bitch," <laughs> just just anger, just the seething anger. Um, and then we later learn that uh, uh, Fujishima just crashed his car into his wife's vehicle while she was uh, making out with a bald dude, who um, uh, Fujishima then uh, beats the shit out of. Uh, one of the things that's fantastic about Fujishima, and I do think that. A lot of what he experiences is phantasmatic, um, uh, but the, like one of the most b- glaring things, and one of the things that allows that the, the expressive phantasmatic things to exist in Fujishima's world is the the very deliberate thing that the film shows us is is false, which is this uh, uh, golden lit. Uh, um, mm. uh, uh, advertisement of this push through a hallway into a kitchen. You get to see the happy, mm. beautiful wife. It is maybe my favorite aspect of this movie. And and the young girl, and we don't hear any audio because there's usually something uh, nice playing over it, but the girl clearly says Papa. Mm-hmm. We, we, we see her say the words Papa and we don't hear it. And we think for a moment, oh, that's the life that Fujishima had. But then mm-hmm. the film shows us that that's an advertisement mm-hmm. on television. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then the film de- re-delivers that package uh, via the, the wife of a corrupt uh, police officer. Um, one of the final pins to fall in the kind of um, uh, conspiracy, uh, which uh, Fujishima ruins. He goes to this um, place and he, he rapes the wife and uh, puts a gun to the young boy's head and so on. That al- I think the movie sets up this unreliable narrator and his fantasy about being a violent noir detective. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Just it, it allows it allows for so much. Um, and a reason I think this movie does it so well, where it might feel kind of stupid in another movie is that it trusts you to figure that out. It trusts you to kind of notice some like, well, something's really off here. Mm -hmm. Um, And it doesn't have like a, we got you. It was fake the whole time. Like plot device in it. Like that never comes. Right. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's the reason why this movie sings so much is it trusts you with, with everything. mm -hmm. Like it, it, it doesn't like when I first saw this film, I wasn't even really fully convinced that the teacher had killed Kaneko at the end. Yeah. Mm, like, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel that way now, like upon multiple rewatches, I feel pretty sure that she's in she's yeah, dead somewhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but like um, it, it never gives you anything on a platter really. And that's really great. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it never bothers to explain itself. Um, and it just kind of like drops it on you. Right, which, which is which is rare for a movie to like trust you so mm-hmm. much in, in that brazen Lynchian way, where yeah, you know one of, one of the things that it trusts you with, uh, there's that moment where we're seeing uh, Fujishima's wife, Kaneko's mother. Uh, she is sitting at her vanity and she is uh, putting on foundation, trying to cover up the scars uh, the, the, uh, from uh, getting the shit kicked out of her and raped by uh, Detective Fu- Fujishima. And the movie trusts you and knows that you're going to understand that as to be real, mm-hmm. uh, right? Yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. the expressive and the absurd, uh, like in Lynch, and then there's the real consequences of this melancholic, uh, completely just um, tragic, uh, um, uh, small, small sequence of her trying to cover up these wounds. We know that in some sense, 
all of this is happening and it's expressive and, and, and absurdist, but there's, there's real consequences Mm -hmm. and real pain happening in this world. And, uh, the consequences of that violence are just tremendous. Everyone is in so much pain. It's handled ironically, uh, in the beginning, like there's Christmas music and, uh, there's a dude, um, uh, receiving oral sex in a, in a, in a bathroom stall and then it cuts to him, his vicious murder, and then it cuts to his vicious murder. So it's like this sort of, um, it's, it's already, sh- I mean, it already begins showing you the strata of things, even if it's like, um, a kind of, it, it doesn't. It, it, you know, one of the things it doesn't uh, really demand of you that much, even though it provides you, it provides us with inner titles uh, saying, you know, uh, the date and the year. Uh, it doesn't really um, uh, need you to, to uh, uh, eternal sunshine it, mm. right? To r- figure out what happened mm. when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a cumulative body that's, f- it's feeding on itself the, the, the inner, the inner uh, things are creating a whole, and uh, it, it's completely legible, and it respects us to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, and I think the movie does like the film noir plot structure really well too. Yeah. Of uh, he falls blunderously uncover. I'm using going to use that word a lot. Uncovers this whole sex ring thing and gets involved with. Uh, the yakuza behind it yeah. and then the police that are actively covering it up right does it in such like a disconnected dream like confusing way that it kind of like makes it harder to piece together yeah. unless you're watching it for like the third time mm-hmm. or whatever but i also don't think that's like uh, to the film's detriment at no all? not at all not at all it like it, it hardly matters but it's all there and it's all really well thought out and it's all like like there's the scene where he he finds Mat- Matsunaga in the bag, right? And he his life is now he's just tortured, yeah. And uh, his stomach's cut open, and you could that's probably the most this movie like wallows in misery. Mm-hmm. Is that sequence to me anyway? Um, mm. is it, well, he's wallows being kept in, alive in a bag. Wallows in f- the physical suffering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, like extended shots of screaming and shit, getting his gut stepped on. Yeah. Um, also, he doesn't die. Yeah. That, that's probably the... Uh, that's one thing that I... Because th- this is probably the fourth or fifth time that I've seen it. And I, I had remembered that they put a bullet in him at the end. But no. No, they, he it, lives. It, it, I, I, like, and it upset me this time. I was like, oh, they really just continued to keep him alive. Mm-hmm. That's really fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just sadistic. But yeah, to, to your point, like that's the thing about... Uh, like a good noir is the the our our vessel through the world will occasionally enter situations that are um completely we mm-hmm. don't understand what's happening he gets kidnapped at one point but then he gets re-kidnapped by people who ki- right yeah. and we don't it's we so don't fucking good it's great it's fucking fantastic uh, the girl rolls down the window because she's com- complaining about how much fujishima stinks mm-hmm. and she gets a fucking giant ass lead pipe uh speared into her head it it that follows we we understand that um, uh, implicitly, because we're behind his shoulder, we also don't know what the fuck is happening. Mm-hmm. He, he's semi conscious. I mean, he's basically. I mean, again, he gets shot. He gets a shit kicked out of him, um, uh, and so on and so forth. But we follow all of those beats to the end, and we think that we've arrived at the top. But really, there's nothing there but the phantasm of Conoco, mm-hmm. who is missing. Uh, the final, to me, the final. Th- Thing at the top of the old pervert um, uh, uh, gr- grooming sex ring thing is is the fact that this what Fujishima has been doing the entire movie is trying to push down this memory of Kaneko where she uh, kisses him. Uh, I'm not going to say seduces, but uh, is able to do her siren call on him and do her spell that completely, uh, you know, his motivation for this entire violent affair has been his desire to choke, kill, slash fuck his daughter. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and it's this depraved energy we realize that's been driving him the whole time. And it's a horror to realize it. And that's a horror to realize that he's never, ever going to be satisfied. Speaking to their relationship as well, is uh, I think the movie does a good job of, of showing that Fujishima is actually why Kaneko is yes. like the way she is. Right. Uh, years of neglect and possibly like verbal and, and physical abuse have uh, led her to just be cold yeah. and... Um, right. Also, any sort of like latent hereditary mental illness. Mm. It's all summarized very well and near the end of the movie where he's talking to the teacher and he just goes, yeah, she's my daughter. Yeah, she's my blood, which is also a very Greek tragedy thing. Mm. It's it's the the I mean, well, it's not even well, there's a fucking uh, extremely popular horror movie. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called Hereditary. I haven't seen um, it. Uh, I mean, this is a this is a this is a thing. Uh, Conoco is a. Uh, I mean, and to Josh's sort of um, assertion, which I, I do agree with uh, on a certain level, the the phantasmatic nature of that sprightly little uh, police dude that I just I adore. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that Conoco exists. Uh, Conoco is ghost-like, wraith-like, um, uh, um, uh, ill-defined, um, mm-hmm. a being whose motivation is. Uh, one that is singular and uh, um, uh, sadistic, uh, which is um, drawing people to their ruin. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure Kanako exists, but that Fujishima is completely incapable of understanding who Kanako is. R- right. Well, that okay, well okay. So this mo- this movie understands implicitly that like a, a good noir is vaguely dreamlike oh right? totally like, yeah, yeah yeah like like a good noir has coincidence it has Im- 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 just impossible convenience mm-hmm. yeah right right just like dreams do so this movie understands that implicitly and i think to its credit conoco is and i mean you know she she doesn't she's not in the film as much as the title would lead you to believe but she is a person who's Depress like like I don't really think that you know it, it's almost hard to call her her unique pathology mental illness. I think she's just a being of malice. Like yeah. she like 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 more than once the movie calls her completely empty. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And 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 that feels so accurate. Like she's not she she's she's not a person. Like she's yeah. not she's not she's not suffering the way that Fujishima is suffering mm-hmm. with, with with like um you know he he does horrible fucked up you know, detestable things. Um, but you can tell that that's, that's a person whose uh, brain is on fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she is just um, a void. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, it's so fascinating to watch. And, and, and in the way that this movie understands that a good noir is dreamlike and understands that like the, the perfect villain, the, the perfect core of, of, of the malice of humanity is undefinable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a husk. It's, yeah, okay. there, there's something about the way Kanako reacts to every situation with this sort of girlish laughter that I really love. Where uh, right when the na- uh, unnamed preteen narrator is meeting her, she like pulls off his bandaid and it hurts him a bit, and then she like giggles yep. like a girl, yep. and it's like a little endearing, but it's actually like a signifier of like a empty psychopath right right um right. and then uh the she does the exact same thing like at the end of the movie it went, but it's her showing him a photo of his rape right right is it isn't this it's hilarious the literal exact same and he, can we can we can we talk a little bit about this so there's um a point where where um fujishima's being held by the yakuza and they take matsunaga's face out of the bag and matsunaga says um, we know that Kaneko only wanted to hang out with us because we sold Ogata to yeah. old men and she w- just wanted to get us back. That would, I mean, that implies that Kaneko felt something for Ogata. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, which I think I missed on all of my previous watchings. Mm. Um, so it, it implies to me that at one time she had feelings and she like related on a human level to other people. Yeah. 
Oh, but like, I, but I don't, oh. but, but I don't really think it's in the text that she ever cared. That's, I think that's it's the thing. kind of ambiguous. Oh, I, yeah. I, I think I think that he's. That's I think why that I he, want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I, I think that he's misunderstand. I think that he's misunderstanding. Uh, I, I, fundamentally, I think that he is is wrong about Conoco um, uh, having loved because when uh, the second victim finally finds her in her replica bedroom slash torture rules so hard slash torture dungeon oh my god at, at the hotel eden uh it, just quick note it's she rents a hotel room permanently that's an exact duplicate of her bedroom except instead of clothes it's full of torture devices yeah yeah sorry uh, uh, and she says i loved ogata that's my second bedroom too <laughs> uh, i loved ogata so i killed him now I can love him more. Yeah, and I I don't and I'm and and she's going to do the same with this this next person and I really think that I really think that he was misunderstanding what Conoco is because n- nothing else points to that. Mm-hmm. There are some people well, that that are I just, There are people that do do there shit are, like there that. Are, yeah, and there are people that are 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 extremely aware like the first person that we encounter that I feel like is is aware of what Conoco is is that very preppy, nice dressed girl who gets interviewed? She has a bob. Uh, yeah, she's the one. Oh, such she, a, such a good haircut. Yeah, yes. so, oh, amazing. Oh yeah, she's it, the girl from Confessions. Oh, oh no shit! Amazing. Okay, she's great. And uh, her friend with the fantastic short uh, mm-hmm. pink uh, purple uh, hair. Na- uh, uh, Nagano. Nagano. Na- um, Nagano is the short haired one. You know, she she is the first to erupt and be mm-hmm. like. This is con. I mean, what? What you? What? Th- nobody hooked Conoco onto anything. Yeah. Conoco is the root. She is evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and I, I think there's there's varying accounts of what what Conoco is, and some people are are. And t- to me, to me, that's correct. That's more well, more correct than mm-hmm. what uh, Matsunaga is saying in his death throes. Uh, it is a weird line, though. I agree, because it kind of. I think, I mean, for me, I think just like if if I think about the reasons that people do things, I think I mean, obviously, right off the top, Kaneko doesn't know what love is, and she can't right. feel oh, love. Oh, one hundred percent. Right. However, I mean, I, it's clear that you know people are objects to her. Mm-hmm. So I I, th- I think in this way it makes them more precious. They they become things that she can like she can own Ogata now. Right? Mm-hmm. Like he's, R- yeah. When uh, yeah. just uh, interrupt very quickly. When when we see uh, the kiss at the, at the coffin for the second time, it becomes completely perverse. Yeah. It's not it's not mourning. It's not reverence, and it's not love. It's possession. Mm-hmm. It's she yeah. made this corpse. And she's happy with her creation, and now yeah. she can ki- now she can kiss it. Yeah. And she. Th- might think it is that that's love just so fucking bleak <laughs> right. I, th- I think she do- i think that's the fun thing about kaneko is that i don't think i don't think she ever lies she right. never doesn't tell the truth yes. it's just that her it's just that her ability to un- to like interact on any level with other people doesn't exist right her, so, her- so yeah so i mean she's going to she she owns ogata she wanted ogata she achieved him uh and then she's going to have this guy now too um, I, I believe that like she loved Nagano in that she can wa- she she can do whatever she wants because Nagano belongs to her in this mm-hmm. way. Yeah, and so just that unique path- like it doesn't it's so far beyond sociopathy that it doesn't even feel like a mental pathology. It just seems like a a demon, like right. a specter. Yeah, of, yeah. That, yeah. Of, yeah. Th- that's exactly what I was thinking during this watch. And and to to your point again, um, uh, or, or I think our collective point. Um, of uh, Conoco being um, sort of uh, content, fundamentally contentless or something. When she gets mm-hmm. stabbed by, by the teacher, she says, "Sensei, you're hilarious, <laughs> right?" She doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, she, she 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 sounds like a wind up toy winding yes. down. Yeah, when yes. she's dying. She just that, says. She says like. She just says, "I love you" over and over mm-hmm. again. Like she's just like she's just recycling lines at this point. Yeah, and the uh, and to me, she's 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 e- she is evil with a capital E. Mm-hmm. She might even be um, like, uh, I mean, to like put Christian theology onto it, she might even be like satanic, uh, just ultimate sort of uh, destructor, um, 
uh, breaker of, of, of all things and the corrupter of mankind type of uh, th- thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she, I mean, my God, she's in hotel Eden. It, it, it opens with Christmas. There's a lot, there's a <laughs> lot, there's lots of, lots of Christian shit. Is it, so it's there's not, a great Virgin Mary shot near the beginning of you, the movie right, as well. Right. Um, but, uh, Oh, I also had a, a better point that I got carried away with. Um, and missed. I will note this right now that we are, Getting close to the end of this episode, really? and we have barely scratched the fucking surface. I of feel this like movie. we just started talking. <laughs> we're, we're over forty-five minutes in. <laughs> well, 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 I mean, Conical alone is a whole episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, uh. One thing that finally struck me, and this is uh, weird that it only just now struck me, is that her siren call, which which textually works so fantastic because this movie, um. Um, again, to the pacing and its credit, uh, is is um, information overload, mm-hmm. and then it'll briefly uh, give you a languid scene that's relatively calm, or or what it mostly does is cut to the uh, the sort of dream pop song and mm-hmm. the uh, the uh, B plot. Uh, but uh, this thing that that literally breaks through the fabric of the film and through songs and through the current action that's happening is Conoco whispering people's ear, I love you. Mm. I love you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I, I was a better point and something I wanted to talk about is that Conoco's, uh knows everyone's heart. She even knows the teacher's heart. Uh, she, the teacher is the only one that's ever uh, in the structure of the film that's able to reject uh, or, or, or fend off Conoco. Uh, cause Conoco grabs her breast and, and, and kisses her and she starts, the teacher starts weeping. She talks about, uh, you know, Conoco mentions her loneliness and, and I mean, this, this adds to like, um, her sort of, uh, phantasmatic demonic character is that she knows everyone's heart and everyone's central weakness. It's just that one, the teacher and her love for her daughter and her desire to protect her daughter that she's finally able to like heave this monster off you know well, I, I kind of interpreted that as just like a bad gamble like i mean kanako doesn't charm every like like she never tries to like um control like it's as far as we can tell she never tries to like control her mother mm-hmm. she's kind of is distant from her mm-hmm. yeah. um so i mean i mean just like a demon in christian lore can't just possess just anybody uh i mean kanako can't control just anybody like they have to she has to be able to find like an in, you know. Right, yeah. right. So, like, and, there, and, she, and, she, uh, and and so and and so she she overreaches when she gets to the teacher. I mean, she has to. She's stuck in her car. That's she that, has no other option. That's exactly right. But she, it's, it's like, but she almost got there. You, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. And she oh, yeah. she very almost cracked that surface, and then and that slight undershoot is what sank her. Um, which uh, I, I I adore that. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, the one like real possible connection that the mother has to Conoco is that at one point the mother shows up in the photos of uh, rich and powerful people who are fucking kids or whatever. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I didn't notice that. Well, that's when he's like, that's when like Fujishima is screaming in his car, right? And then he tears a oh. photo and then eats it. Oh. Oh. It's the mother, right? So my, my interpretation is that that's a fucking delusion. He's oh, fucking completely lost it. Right. And in and, and his mind, he's like, she's behind it, too. She's behind or, it, too. Yeah, right. That screams like schizophrenia to me. And actually, I, I that it never really, you never really see that character again after that, I also think is really a great creative decision. Mm-hmm. She, she the, the, the mother character feels the most tethered to the real like mm-hmm. the like something like reality or one of the most thing one of the things that are that's most tethered to reality her and the teacher that kills Conoco. yeah they, they feel tethered to the no- the normal world uh the normal world that is still perturbed and 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 rocked by Conoco, but is uh quotidian in some way good movie guys yeah, yeah. So great. and it does like it also hits every like if, you, if you're really big on a- auteur theory which i'm really not um it hits all of nakashima's really well of uh 
kids are evil and sci- kids are psychopaths and it does it in a really interesting way where it it it, it feels like old man yells at cloud a bit mm-hmm. with um the way that uh they're talking to a group of Kanako's old middle school friends and they're all they're, they're all just leeching off of them vulgar yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I didn't get that as much as I did in Confessions. Um, for for me, this film felt like aggressively about. I mean, it's in the text, it's in the dialogue. It's mm-hmm. like you know, what is the responsibility for you of the of the person that you create its actions? Like, mm-hmm. not not ju- not just literally, but like 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 not that you're literally responsible for their actions, but like in like a cosmic sort of justice sense, you created this person. This person has caused so much pain and misery. How are you not responsible? You know what I mean, right? And and it, 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 uh, Conoco being deprived of uh, any kind of idiosyncratic substantive content as a human being and being phantasmatic. Something popped in my head this recent watch too, which was like uh, the whole "it takes a village to raise a child," mm-hmm. but it also takes a village to, to create something like Conoco. Yeah, it's like what it, what is collective responsibility to? this youth culture uh, with this bullying and this, and this gang violence and, and drugs. And uh, so there, the, so a lot of that feels like old man yells at cloud that, to I, me. Right. But the thing is that um, I feel like it fully implicates Fujishima for Kaneko. Um, and, and so it's ultimate message isn't really like these damn kids. It's like, no, you're actually just as bad as they are. Right. But um, you're you're a like mutation of an idea, and they're a, a mutation of your mutation of an idea, and so the, there's like the it's it feels kind of like societal decay, but I don't know, it feels a bit more fair about it. Oh yeah, I mean I yeah I yeah yeah I agree. Yeah, I, I guess my takeaway is just slightly more general. Like they have the, these wild, col- colorful parties, and it's all just uh, like to get this kid drugged. Yeah, I mean everything. Everything is a front for something. I mean, even the even the the uh, idealized household, which we we see before mm-hmm. Fujishima destroys it, they've still been living a complete lie with this absolute mm-hmm. psychopath of a father, mm-hmm. this patriarchal figure. And there's just nothing kind of at the core of it all. It's just, it's misery with a mask on or something. Yeah. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Soundtrack for this movie is good. Oh my God. Amazing. Uh, Yoko Kano worked on it. The Mm. uh, queen ghost in the shell cowboy bebop lady. Um, Queen. She actually composed that like pop song that comes up and, the first half of the movie mm, beautiful stuff yeah um, oh, are we gonna are we gonna put i love my lsd somewhere <laughs> oh fuck me stunning banger um that dempa Gumi incorporated song that plays is real good yeah. even even when it's like uh choosing music to illustrate societal decay they're still kind of bangers yeah exactly yeah all the songs are great and there's even um uh so the song that we always, that we always hear when we return to the second victim, the young uh, Conoco second young victim, uh, uh, there's a rockier version of it with drums and mm-hmm. and a and a bass guitar, and then there's a there's a somber version that's almost a cappella. There's a bit of instrumentation, and it's really smart about that. There's also a guitar solo that's played in a full rock song with a like three piece drums, mm-hmm. bass, blah blah blah. Uh, but we also hear it in this like ambient staticky way uh, uh, overlaid. So the, there's these beautiful recurring themes that that um, you know it's not like a new song every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also charming is that what I'm gonna call that uh, American grindhouse aesthetic or, or or the kind of like Anglophilia thing is that there's like American traditional like traditional rock 20th century rock things but they're clearly being performed by japanese uh vocalists yeah, and yeah, yeah. uh and and th- 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 that that mutation is so it's subtle but it is it colors the it colors the the uh, um, texture and the 
I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm to say, like, if they slapped a generic American rock song over the Last things, Flowers by Radiohead. Right. It, it would, oh, God. Well, well that was used to. You, 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 you get one mulligan. <laughs> but it, I th- it were. I think, I actually, I actually kind of. Uh, That's know, a good song. The, Fuck you, Craig. There, okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to be really brave right now. Alex and I, a couple years ago, went to a record store. I came out with, in my bag, a uh, double LP of Radiohead's Amnesiac. So that's my truth. And I just want everybody to know that I think there are some good Radiohead songs. You're um, so brave. Do, do people, <laughs> has the consensus turned against Radiohead? Oh, I think people... I, liter- I literally feel extremely medium about Radiohead. Yeah. I never think about Radiohead, but I'm never mad about Radiohead. Yeah, I, I feel like... If if I said, like, I'm not super into Radiohead, but I feel like if I told you guys I was super into Radiohead, you'd be like, yeah, all right, whatever. Well, just, like, I, I don't think I'd be judged for liking Radiohead. I They're know. not Nickelback. Right. I, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where the, <laughs> it's still a shame. <laughs> How? Um, I don't know. It's complicated. So, okay, so, <laughs> but, with the world of <laughs> Sorry. I've been thinking. I've been thinking about this. I don't. And uh, this might be a semantic argument, but I think it's important. Um, I don't know if this movie uh, has societal decay like it is um, in Confessions. I think this movie feels more like societal vacuousness. I could see like, that. Yeah. Like like society yeah, maybe that's just a at poor, large. Poor choice of words on my part, but I think that's a better way of putting it. Like 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 now. I mean, I was just. Um, giving birth to this theory while I'm talking, but like, uh, m- like I feel like this movie is, um, like Conoco is society at large. Like, um, Conoco's emptiness is the same emptiness that, um, like these party sequences have. It's, um, uh, a more vicious emptiness than the, than the Ikea commercial with the happy family. Like mm-hmm. it's this, like, like Conoco's like, uh, uh, humanity is manufactured in the same way. All of this other stuff is, and so it's just, uh, I think that's why this movie is so, um, so deafeningly quiet. It's just this, 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 this emptiness. It's like a vacuum, this whole film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and to the point of, of this, uh, uh, it's, it's what, I don't want to say criticism, but it's like an equal opportunity hater. Um, the, the, uh, what is an American boomer ideal of the nuclear family with the mother and the father and the child is is uh, um, uh, cracked in half. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the medical profession and and um, uh, um, the po- police are, are 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 cracked wide open. And uh, what we can call like millennial culture yeah. uh, of like uh, uh, having parties and. And enjoying pleasure is is cracked open and 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 even the self uh, yeah there, exactly and and the self in in the self in that world is fundamentally like uh, uh, veering towards um, the catastrophe of of being hollow like Conoco. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's or, 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 or mad like Fujishima <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. yeah you're either you're either um, uh, 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 burning through the world and destroying it like a sociopath, or like a just a hideous nihilist that's you know, um, uh, 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 you know, her secret night job is doing fucking hideous crimes. Uh, um, um. Uh, before we wrap this up, I want to give a, a I want to pour one out for Draft House Films. We had a good run, boys. They did a really great job of finding foreign films that would like never otherwise get distribution in America, and also uncovering bizarre old films that would never have a chance at distribution outside of like a, a one of the bizarre DVD companies that Balaclava Man holds up mm-hmm. in his. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, YouTube videos. They don't really exist anymore. Draft House, the the greater company, was hit with all those controversi- controversies. And then um, the guy who would have funded more has, has moved to the uh, production company Neon. Mm. 
and they seem more interested in producing their own films than bringing out foreign films. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Uh, and it's only through it, that com- it's only through Draft House films that I would have ever encountered this movie in the first place. I mean, it's a bummer we don't have that source for like because they released R one hundred, they released um, uh, Pieta, uh, Miami Connection, like. Mm-hmm. Movies yeah, that looking, looking in, at their list now. Yeah, movies that in the past ten years like have meant like a lot to me, and so it's like kind of sucks to see them gone, but I get it. You're right. Uh, oh, they re-released Roar. Yeah, I oh, forgot that the was the Greasy them. Strangler people. Yeah, that was, I didn't that see that one. Miserable. It's just tough. But at least they make their catalog pretty available. So like most of their stuff is on Shutter. Most of their stuff is on Amazon. Yeah. Um, that's good anyway. And you guys should watch. You guys should watch the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> that sounds fucking horrible. It sounds like it a fucking. It sounds like a Trailer Park blows. Boys episode. <laughs> it fucking blows. It, it's it thinks it's a dark comedy. It's just disgusting. Mm. Which I mean, I mean, there can be room for movies that exist purely to be disgusting. I just hate them. Yeah, and that's my thoughts on. That's my review of the Greasy Strangler. <laughs> Anyway, the first time I saw World of Conoco was at uh, the Music Box because they used to have like some sort of distribution deal where they would screen every Draft House film. It was a midnight screening at the same time that a Rocky Horror screening was happening in the big theater. <laughs> so I waited out in the lobby and was like, maybe I should just go home. Maybe I should just go home. And then I got into the theater and it was like a bunch of like... 18 year old weeaboos in the theater and then me 25 year old me and i was like well this kind of isn't my crowd but i like the rest of the movies this company's <laughs> put out so i guess i'll stick through it <laughs> and then fucking world of conoco happens and it was like i, I just want to go home and lie down man i'm done <laughs> Um, I've mentioned this on the show before, but every now and then we encounter a movie that becomes really difficult to explain to my roommates. Mm-hmm. World of Conoco is one of those movies. What part did they yeah. walk in on? So they, I mean, they come and go because you have to go through the living room to get through uh, the apartment. Oh, good. Um, yeah, so so they, <laughs> uh, they uh, were definitely there. For like the initial murder scene right at the jump. <laughs> oh, oh, like that that shot, that cut of the dude getting the knife in his uh, Certain, like yeah. in his chest. It just feels so oh, fucking God. visceral, and like the yeah. foley in that whole sequence is just fucking incredible. Uh, I think they were there for the scene where Fujishima and Kiriko are talking to the teenagers in the diner, and the teenagers are being rowdy. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, of course, a very different movie from the savage murder in the convenience store. Yeah. And th- and they were definitely there. They might have come in a couple other times, but they were definitely there for the the uh, the rape of the wife of the assassin. Mm. Um, oh. And they're like, so and they're like, so what's happening now? Oh. And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> there's a girl and she's really mean. <laughs> <laughs> So it's impossible to succinctly explain Conoco. So I'm like, yeah. it's, she's bad. We're trying to find her. He's also bad. Um, we're all bad. It's <laughs> it's uh, the tagline from Problem Child 2. He's bad. She's worse. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, there's the episode copy right there. <laughs> uh, also... Uh, this movie continues the trend of giving Tetsuya Nakashima films worse names in English or worse titles in English. What's the Japanese name? Uh, Thirst. Oh, that's right. And it's based on a book called Endless Thirst. I like World of Conoco for the title of this film. I think I think Thirst is almost too vague. Uh, I feel like you could call this movie anything and it would still, still be fine. <laughs> I feel like th- I don't think thirst th- would prepare me more for what happens in the movie. I, I think thirst implies a need, and I don't think anyone in this movie needs anything. They just kind of like... I mean, I mean the, they, Fujishima I mean, has this I'm, constant desperation throughout the entire movie to find his daughter. Yeah, but, it, yeah, but it's, ne- it's absolutely never um, like uh, congealed into like a cogent need. He doesn't, he doesn't even know. Like He wants to find the corpse of his dead daughter so that he can kill her. Um... <laughs> I mean, he ha- he has a need, but it's vague and undefined. I think uh, World of Conoco is so much better. Like it's a fantasy. This whole this whole uh, uh, 
uh, nightmare is just is her plaything. I, I also. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, it, it, that just feels like it encapsulates the movie so much. Like, like we're all just dancing along to Kaneko's beat this whole time. I also like the potential double entendre of it. Uh, world of Kaneko. Okay, Kaneko's personal world, but the world being the world of Kaneko. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Kaneko's world or the uh, society or the world at large being Kaneko's world uh, or being suffused with Kaneko. Uh, like, 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 in, like, um, f- f- foundationally st- structured by Conoco. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I do disagree, but I'm going to agree to disagree because we're running long. Yeah, I mean that's a shame, but that's okay. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm gonna die on do this we, hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna die on this hill. That's I kind of like the potential for a double uh, entendre. In the title. let me throw another Nakashima title change at you. Um, what came out in English as uh, "Memories of Matsuko" was originally titled uh, "The Life of Despised Matsuko." That's better. Well, I, 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 have, I haven't seen the movie. I can't say. Well, Craig has. Better. That's better. That's better. Because um, Memories of Matsuko, I thought that it was going to be like Amelie. Because that's no. what it was. Because <laughs> that's, that's kind of what it sounds like. It sounds romantic. Mm-hmm. Um, did, did, did Confessions have a different title? Actually, that one is just a Japanese word for Confessions. Kamikaze Girls? That has a different title. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, but then again, maybe I like the misleading memories of Matsuko. <laughs> I don't know. I'm that's it's whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Things Do we have an emoji? Uh, so I um, started watching this when Matt was still sleeping because I knew he was like not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he he woke up and came out in the living room when I was like 35 minutes in, and I just kind of looked at him, and he's like, "What are you watching?" And I'm like, "Guess." Uh, and then he looked at it for like maybe four seconds and is like, is this Kaneko? And I'm like, it is Kaneko. Uh, it's the middle finger emoji. <laughs> so he sent me the, um, I don't know if this is passive aggressive or not. <laughs> He's, he sent me the sleeping emoji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meant to literally imply that um, I left him sleeping to go watch it for the, what, the fourth time, I think. And also, I, I I feel like you could read this bitchily. Like mm. I'd rather sleep than watch this movie. And also, I feel like, oh sorry. Oh no, it's like I, I feel like Matt appreciates Conoco, but he doesn't want to watch Conoco anymore, and it just keeps happening. On a previous episode of the show, uh, we brought up World of Conoco, so it was probably the Confessions episode. And I think you said Matt's response to like rewatching the World of Conoco is, "I saw it once, and I'm still tired." <laughs> yeah. Okay. So maybe yeah, it has. Go. Maybe that's what the sleeping emoji is for. Or yeah, uh, I was noticing this watch the parallels between this movie and Fire Walk with me, Conoco being the evil version of Laura Palmer, um, and uh, David Bowie's Dark asser- Palmer. David Bowie's assertion in the beginning. Yeah, everyone. Everyone is. Everyone in this movie Live is is from the Black the Lodge, the the dark version of themselves. <laughs> um, uh, but David Bowie's assertion in the beginning of uh, Firewalk with me that uh, we live inside of a dream. Is that what Bowie says? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we live inside a dream. Yeah. And something to that effect is actually said in Conoco. I forget. But Do you dream? Do you dream or something? Or th- Then this- he describes his dream as the... Um, I have a wife and daughter who love me. I take that happiness and I destroy it. Damn. Matt, you're so deep. So, then... so, Con- so Conoco is zero suit Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> so Got it. Fuck it, mask off. Well, Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just described it as like a dark version of Fire Walk with me. I, I, at one point, I was watching it and and I was thinking, um, this movie is like Cloud Atlas, but everyone's off their meds again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Josh, what are we, wait, no, Craig, what are we watching next week? Next week, we are watching the Claire Danes, Bill Pullman, uh, uh, Kate Beckinsale, Kate Beckinsale, uh, 1999 film, Broke Down Palace. So be sure to watch 2004's Broke Back Mountain, directed by Ang Lee. <laughs> it's a sequel. <laughs> it's canon. Same universe. I, 
You can find me online at Diatron5, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> where I'm sure I'll be tweeting more about the world of Conoco when it comes out, because as, although we've been talking for an hour, we have not really scratched the surface of this movie. No, no. Oh, uh, you can find me at, uh, at Craig Neeson and www.craigneeson.com to learn more about the broke back on extended universe. <laughs> you know, you could be like those people that insist on calling um, anime by their Japanese titles, even though they're like, <laughs> you, you could be, like, <laughs> oh, oh. You could be like, catch me tweeting about thirst later. <laughs> Oh, uh, quick note. Um, Tetsuya Nakashima was originally tapped to direct the Attack on Titan movie. And uh, after following or, or, or leaving that project because of creative differences with the people in charge, he made World of Gonico instead. Oh, thank God. <laughs> right? Maybe he's just not enough of a fascist to make Attack on Titan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this um, movie is so fucking Schrader-esque that uh, we've gone too long. <laughs> Cutting that thought off. <laughs> You can find me online where I'm probably not talking about World of Conoco, but I could, if you ask, uh, at Amon's, uh, A-M-O-N-N-S. Listen to us on the internet, iTunes, Spotify, uh, Swim Fans Pod on Twitter and Instagram, and also SwimFansPod.com. Rate, view, tell your friends. Listen to more episodes, maybe multiple times. And I, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the one person who found this episode by Googling World of Conoco, and there's nothing online about this movie whatsoever. Hi, thank you for listening. Why don't you check out some more episodes? Yes, we are funny and charming, and if you really like us, you can buy stuff from my Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an Amazon? No, I don't. I don't. I I was was like, you have to get approval from the rest of us (laughs) before you just put in your Amazon wish link list. I think that maybe we're like the Sudden Valley of podcasters. (laughs) Like, we're we're really pretty, but just so empty. Yeah. Uh, Most of this is just house fill. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Tune in next week for... I'm sorry. Broke down. Oh, fuck. God damn it, you guys. <laughs> no, you did, you did it. You had oh, it. You had oh, it. You had wait. it. A broke down palace. Broke down palace. God damn it. Broke back Danes. <laughs> broke back and sail Claire. <laughs> uh, broke Bill Pullman. <laughs>